So I've decided to make a bunch of shorter videos where I only discuss exactly what the Lord showed me, exactly the way he showed me it. And excuse me if it sounds a little bit arrogant, but when the Lord speaks to you and you know that you know that God said it, it's like, yeah, this is what God says. Anything that contradicts that is not from God. Straight up, period. That's why I can say when in the Bible where it says the sky was rolled up like a scroll, and I say, the Lord told me that's a mushroom cloud from a nuclear strike. Anybody who says anything different is lying because the Lord said that to me. Boom! In the name of Jesus. Boom! In the name of Jesus. I'm just saying. So, yeah. When you know what God said, it's wonderful when you know for sure what God says. For example, if you're about to if you're if you're about to get married and you're not sure, you better hold off. I'm just saying. But when you know that you know God has spoken to you, then all hell could break loose and you can stand firm on what God said. Because you know that you know God said it. Just saying. So, I'm going to quickly talk about uh, in uh, or right around the time when James Foley was beheaded, I, I started having dreams. God did a major like shift in my life. And I had dreams where I saw a nuclear attack. And... I've had at least three dreams. Now, in 2001, actually in 1993, when I lived in Douglas Hall at the University of Oregon on campus, I remember I had dreams where I clearly saw September 11, 2001. That was in 93. Seven years later, September 11, 2001 comes along. I'm watching that play out on the news, and I, I had forgotten the dreams, but when I had the dreams, I knew they were from God. And while I'm watching this news footage, I kept thinking, man, I've seen this somewhere. And I was like, what is this? And I, I, I couldn't figure it out because I had forgotten about the dreams because the dreams had happened seven, eight years earlier. And then I prayed, and I said, God, where? why is this so what is about this dream or the, what this, this uh, attack on the World Trade Center? What is it about this that seems so familiar? And then he reminded me of the dreams. So, again, in 2014, right around September, right around when ISIS first stepped on the scene and James Foley was beheaded publicly, right around that time I was in the middle of a transitional period where God has shut down my, my business I was making decent money, doing really well, and basically, um, I stopped working my regular business, and I started having dreams about a nuclear attack, and so that's when I started praying and seeking God, and that's when I started making YouTube videos again. Now, I had made videos in 2007, 2008 that was mostly focused on... Um, you know, I wore a hat, had my sunglasses on, big old chain. And I was trying to keep my identity concealed because I actually lived in Compton. And I wanted to um, evangelize YouTube using... Uh, that's why I chose... There was no other name available. So I, I tried to be... Uh, I chose a, a bunch of different names. And the only one that was available was Super Gospel Gangster. So that's what I chose. And it was really a dismay when I tried the, a couple of names that I wanted, and I didn't get them. And so finally I just settled with Super Gospel Gangster. But anyway, the point is, I stopped making videos in somewhere around 2009, 2010. And then for uh, four years later in 2014, I started making videos again. And that was when I started to... That was when I started having dreams about the nuclear attack. And here's what I believe now. Now, I know I said that I was going to stick to only things that I know for sure. 
So on this one, I'm going to say I'm not 100% sure, but I think the fifth seal, when ISIS stepped on the scene in 2014, the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, I believe that has something to do with the fifth seal where God says, wait a little longer until the number is complete of fellow saints to be put to death for their faith. I believe that ha has something to do with the change. There was a shift. Let me just say it this way. There was a shift at the end of 2014. Let me say it that way. Something changed. Definitely in my life. So. You can choose to look and check out some of my other videos where I talk about the nuclear attack. I'm wearing a funny little hat in that video. Um, also, I hate to do this, but Paul did it. Peter did it. John did it. You know, throughout the Bible, you see men of God doing this. They all gave, they, they, they all gave and were givers. But they also took up offerings. So there's a little kind of link on my page up in the right side. It says give by PayPal. If you feel led of the Lord. Now I don't want your money. Unless you know that you know God's telling you to. I, haven't, I have been unemployed for over a year. And I've been living off of the money that I made from my business. So I'm good. I mean. But sometimes God. One, it'd be nice, you know, if the Lord speaks to you. I'm just saying, if God speaks to you, that'd be great. If not, I'm good too. I'm all good. But sometimes the Lord wants you to obey him in some way. And I will say this. Don't do anything unless it's surrendering it to the Lord because you love him. In other words, I can't stand it when preachers teach. Give your offering of $75 and you'll get the blessing of seven. And, 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 and they try to tempt you with a bunch of stuff you're going to get back. I say, if you're going to give, give because you just love God and say, Lord, I just love you and I just surrender this at your feet. Here you go, Lord. I love you. And just obey God out of obedience and don't ask for anything. Separate your asking from your giving. Some people, every time they put a dollar in the offering, they're, well, Lord, I believe in you for that Mercedes Benz. Or they try to remind God, you know what I need, Lord. And then they put a dollar in the offering. Don't do that. Just say, Lord, I give this to you. I love you. Now, later when you're in your prayer closet, the Bible says, ask, seek, knock. Seek God, worship God, you know, so, but what I'm saying is, you do your asking over here, you do your giving over here, you keep them separate. In other words, when you give, some people give, and they try to use that to twist God's arm. Well, God, I just gave $500 in the offering, I expect to get me a brand new home. You know, it's like, shut up with your, I want this from God. Shut up with your I'll only obey God if he's going to give me something I want. Now shut up with that. I'm serious. Shut up with that. Sick of that. Do you love him? Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. He didn't say, if you love me, you'll obey me. Actually, he did say, he said, if you love me, you'll obey me and I'll send the Holy Spirit. He didn't say... If you love me, you'll obey me, and you can make demands of me, and I'll give you a bunch of worldly stuff. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't be believing God for anything that's going to have you tied down to this world, because if the mark of the beast were to come out tomorrow, where would you stand? When Jesus said to the rich young ruler, he said, there's one thing you lack. He said, go sell everything you have. And give to the poor, then come follow me. Could you do that? Think about it. Could you walk away from everything you have right now? Well, that's what's going to happen when the mark of the beast comes out. And you know what? Paul did it. John did it. Paul said, or Peter did it. Peter said, um, 
Lord, we've left everything to follow you. We know that John basically left, left the, the, the fishing business to his dad and went and was following Jesus everywhere. We know that when Elijah went to Elisha, Elisha dropped what he was doing, sacrificed his bulls, went and said goodbye to his parents and followed Elijah. So it is biblical to walk away from everything you have in order to serve Jesus. And every single man, <clears throat> real man of God, if you do your study in your Bible, we see that Jacob, he had to leave where he was living and traveled. We see Abraham, God said, leave your land where you are now and go where I tell you to go. And God gave him all that land. God gave it to him, but he wasn't demanding that. He didn't say, okay, God, I'll go, but you better give me a lot of land. He just said, okay, Lord, I'll surrender myself and humble myself and obey you. Anyway, the point is, if you want, you can, you have that option. If the Holy Spirit tells you that you can give. And you know what? I've given thousands of dollars. I've been obedient to God. I've given cars. I've given a Honda. I've given a Toyota. Actually, I bought a Toyota for some. I mean, I've given. I've given a Lincoln. I've given a Mercury. I've given a Chevy. You know, I've given a Honda motorcycle. I've given a Kawasaki motorcycle. Just giving them. Giving away. And sometimes to my own hurt. Sometimes I still think about that Kawasaki KX250 that I gave to my pastor. Still, and it just, it just sits there in his garage. He never even rides it. I mean, he rode a few times, but point is, I'm like, I'll, if you ain't riding it, well, why don't you let me come and get it, and I'll go ride it. <laughs> anyway, praise God. Just obey God. Put God first and fall in love with Jesus. And like I said, well, fall in love with the Lord. That's it. That's the most important thing. Fall in love with Jesus. And if you love him, you'll obey him. And if you obey him, he will send the Holy Spirit because he said he would. Amen.